This morning we're going to talk about what the Bible has to say about moms and what God's pattern is. It is amazing, frankly, how our society has changed. It's amazing how our society's perception of a woman has changed, how the society's design for her role has changed. If you ever happen to be rummaging through any old magazines or old newspapers, the kind you see in old bookstores and in your garage or your attic somewhere, and you, you look at the women that are portrayed in some of the ads in the past. You see mothers rocking babies and women in kitchens cooking dinner for families using some special product or a woman sitting on a bed reading stories to her children. And pictures like that, images like that almost sound like fiction in our world today. When you look at the woman in advertising today, you see her dressed up in a slick business suit, swinging a briefcase as she sails down a crowded street. Or you see her in tights doing aerobics. Or in a skimpy bathing suit, half exposed. What is it that our society really views as the woman to be exalted, the woman to be honored? What does the excellent woman of the 90s really look like? What kind of woman is she? What is the modern superwoman? Well, I suppose if we created a composite, it might go a little like this. She works, builds her career, demands equal pay, refuses to submit to her husband, demanding equality with him and everything, uh, has an affair or two and a divorce or two, exercises her independence, relies on her own resources, doesn't want her husband or her children to threaten her personal goals, very often has her own bank account. She hires a maid or a cleaning service, eats out at least 50% of the time with her family or without, uh, makes cold cereal, cereal and coffee the standard breakfast for everybody, uh, quick frozen meals, the usual dinner fare, if there is a dinner fare at home, expects her husband to do at least an equal share of housework. She is tanned, coiffured, aerobicized, shopping to keep up the fashion trends, make sure she can compete in the intention getting contest. She puts the kids in a daycare center, makes sure each one has a TV in his room or a radio and a CD player so they are entertained all the time and don't bother her, leaving them to the brainwashing of the immoral materialistic society that pumps whatever it pumps through those media. Uh, she is opinionated usually, likes to be heard from, and is eager to fulfill her personal goals. That's the kind of woman that the world applauds. Uh, she can't really stay married, can't stay happy, and her kids get into trouble and sometimes drugs and often become criminals. And she is far from the woman that God has called the excellent woman to be. What does God say a woman, a mother, is to be? Well, let's turn to Proverbs chapter 31, that time-honored, age-old portion of Scripture, and see what it has to say. Because herein is God's revelation of the excellent woman. Actually, it says in verse 10, an excellent wife. Here is the description. When it comes down to what a woman ought to be, this is it. Now, this is an ideal. This is a model. This doesn't describe some particular woman. This describes the ideal woman. There is a lot to be said about women in the book of Proverbs. As you know, the book of Proverbs is a list of Proverbs or statements of wisdom. And throughout the book of Proverbs, there is a, there is a continual interest in women. There is a woman who appears frequently in the book of Proverbs, and she is the opposite of the excellent woman. She is the adulteress. She flatters with her lips. She forsakes the covenant with her own husband to seduce someone else. The adulteress has lips that drip honey. She has a smooth tongue and she hunts for the precious life of some victim. There is not only the adulteress, but there is the noisy woman, the loud, boisterous woman with whom no one wants to live and would a uh, normal man would prefer, the proverb says, to live in the corner of a roof in a tiny little place than in a big house with a boisterous woman. There is the foolish woman, there is the rebellious woman, there is the quarrelsome woman, and they are all really set in contrast to this excellent wife here in chapter 31. 
There is, in chapter 12, verse 4 of Proverbs, this statement, An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who shames him is as rottenness in his bones. Nothing better than an excellent wife, nothing worse than the opposite. In fact, a wife has a tremendous ability to influence a husband and a family. In 1 Kings chapter 21, there is a statement made about Ahab, the wicked king. Perhaps as wicked as any king in all of the annals of the history of Israel. It says of, ah of Ahab that he was wicked because he was incited to it by his wife, Jezebel. We talk about the fact that God has designed men to be the head of the family, and that means provision, and that means protection, that means leadership. Men have that responsibility, but men do not have more than, and perhaps not as much as, women when it comes to influence. Ahab was the man of his house. He was even the king. He was a leader. He was strong. But his life was shaped by the influence of his wife. A wife plays that role in the life of her husband and the life of her children. So turning from the adulterous and the noisy woman and the foolish woman, the rebellious woman, the quarrelsome woman, the woman who incites her husband to do evil, we come in chapter 31 to the excellent wife. And here is laid out for us the pattern for that woman. Now, by the way, just to give you a little bit of background, you look at verse 1, it says, The words of King Lemuel, the oracle or the speech or the burden which his mother taught him. Now, we don't know really anything about King Lemuel, but he had a good Jewish mother. And along with chicken soup and whatever else she provided for him, she gave him some really good advice. Because he was royal and because he was going to take a position of rulership, she told him some things he really needed to know. She said to him in verse 3, do not give your strength to women. Don't engage yourself in sexual liaisons with other women. In other words, don't commit fornication as a single man. Keep your life pure. Do not give away your strength to women. Those are the ways that destroy kings. She gave him some further good advice. Verse 4, don't drink. Don't drink wine, don't drink strong drink, because it clouds your judgment. She continued with this advice, and she says to him in verse 8, Open your mouth for the dumb. In other words, speak for those people who can't speak for themselves. Those people who are oppressed. Those people who can't defend themselves. Those people who are too small and insignificant to have a platform of self-defense. You take up their cause. 